I don't celebrate Canada Day. This is because the foundation of Canada in 1867 was predicated and built on the theft and embezzlement of Indigenous lands. Indigenous people were cleared off of the land and pushed onto reserves in poorer areas of the country. Their children were sent to residential schools in part as hostages to ensure their good behaviour. The children in the schools didn't learn anything. Instead, they were beaten and brutalised, sometimes sexually abused and exposed to fatal diseases like tuberculosis and flu. The government knew that these deaths were taking place. In 1922, Duncan Campbell Scott, then Minister for Indigenous Affairs, or Indian Affairs as it was then, wrote that he knew that the death rates in the schools were higher than on reserves. But even so, he allowed the schools and the deaths to continue. That's why there are now being discovered the unmarked graves of children in the grounds of residential schools, which as has been commented, were hardly schools, but more forced assimilation centers because the children were beaten if they spoke indigenous languages. Some people are saying, oh, but that was in the past. Everything's better now. No, this is not the case. There are people who are taking away the social services are taking away children from indigenous people sometimes at birth the excuse being that there is too much poverty on the reserve well why is there so much poverty on the reserve that is because the federal government enforces poverty on indigenous people the reserves represent 0.2 percent of the land area in Canada and it's often poor land that can't be farmed and even if they could farm it the Indian Act prevents a lot of um, a lot of things that you would think indigenous people should be able to do so what's the solution the solution is to give indigenous people land back to give them self-determination that's what the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples calls for. And now I hear you think, oh, but the Canadian government is going to implement the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. Not really, because what's happening is that the government is going to make UNDRIP subordinate to Canadian law. That means it will still be subordinate to the Indian Act, um, to the notion that um, that the government actually owns the 89% of land that it holds and that the status quo is somehow okay. Well, it's not because as well as all the other things I've already mentioned, there's environmental racism, which is where it's seen as okay to build factories and mines and oil pipelines on or near indigenous reserves and unceded lands. That's why Kanohus Manuel is currently struggling against the Trans Mountain Pipeline. It's why the land back, um, 1492 Land Back Lane, land defenders are defending the, their, the corner of their reserve, which was otherwise going to be developed. It's why the Wet'suwet'en didn't want the pipeline built through their territory. It's why the blockaders at Fairy Creek are trying to stop the logging of old growth timber. And on and on and on. Think of grassy narrows that people poisoned by mercury pollution, which should have been cleared up 40 years ago. So they've been suffering the ongoing effects of mercury poisoning for 40 years. If all of this doesn't make you angry, then there's something wrong. 
if you maybe you don't see indigenous people as having the same rights as you why not they were here first it's their land they weren't conquered they were the land was stolen out from under them because treaties were made which they still adhere to and the government has reneged on those treaties again and again and again. We live on a piece of territory called the Haldeman Tract, which was given to the Six Nations, the Haudenosaunee, in, supposedly in perpetuity, six miles either side of the Grand River. When they decided to sell some of that land, the government held the money in trust for them. Well, guess what? They've never seen a penny of it. The land we are living on is stolen land. Now, no one is saying that all settlers have to go back to where they came from or any of that. But settlers hold 11% of the land. The government holds 89% of the land. Indigenous people have 0.2% of the land and yet they are 5% of the population. Something's got to give here. The reason that indigenous people can't be self-determining is because they don't have control of their own lands. They must be given control of their own land in order to flourish and for their cultures to be restored and their languages to be restored. This is really important. Indigenous people know how to live in right relationship with the land and we can learn from them. So, if anything I've said makes any sense to you, I've got a whole page of resources on my website, uh, inclusivewicca.org, and it's called, um, it's, so you go to the uh, articles page and click on Indigenous Peoples, and I'll post a link below. There's lots of things you can do to help. You can lobby your MP uh, and your MPP, you can learn about the issues and try to educate others about them. And you can donate to the Indigenous Residential School Survivors Association, the First Nations Children's Caring Society, and the Orange Shirt Society. It's time to wake up and do something. Support idlenomore.ca. They've got a good series of actions going on to support indigenous land rights it's time land back solidarity